So before I contracted COVID, I, I went to a uh, Republican Party meeting in, in my hometown of Cartersville, Georgia. I, I thought that it was important for me to go for a few reasons. For one, Brad Raffensperger was there. I'm, I'm putting up the picture right now. Uh, Brad Raffensperger was there, who is the uh, Secretary of State of the state of Georgia, right? And, you know, he caught a lot of scrutiny for how he handled the um, election and, and the vote, and counting of the votes and all of that. He was supposed to find some votes that didn't exist. And, and his party was really upset with him. Uh, members of his party were disappointed. Leaders of his party were, were really let down by him because he didn't find these votes that didn't exist. Not that they would have swayed the election, but nonetheless. So I went. Because I'm like, what is the Republican base going to say to somebody who is who they are? He's, he's one of them. He's Republican as well. But he's not, he made decisions that the party uh, is not a fan of, right? So uh, make sure you go to BigBabyTheGoat.com, Juneteenth shirts, yeah, got that drip for sale. But uh, so the first thing I got from the meeting was, boy, oh boy. People are angry, right? And here's what I'll say. I think the Republicans are Trump. The Democrats are Twitter and the people are fucked. Excuse my language for those of you who don't like that type of language, but I'm, I'm just being honest with you. It's the, the, the Republican Party now has taken the identity of whatever Donald Trump chooses to be. The Democrat Party has taken the identity of whatever Twitter says is the right thing to do right place to be uh, on the right side of an issue and the people those of us who fall somewhere in between that are screwed because we don't live on most of us don't live on the words of one single person and most of us don't live on the words of what twitter of, of twitter like we don't like build our day, build our morals around what Twitter says is okay because we know Twitter is, is as fickle as a pickle. Like, it changes every single day. And the people who are on Twitter are just like the people who leave bad Yelp reviews. Uh, uh, they're the people who are bored. Like, how many bad experiences have you had at a restaurant and and then you say, let me go to Yelp and, let, and leave a bad review? No. Nobody participates in the comment boxes. You know what I mean? So, that's kind of where I see things. And while, while I was at that meeting, that was one of the big things I pulled out because I go there and there was two black people at the meeting. I expected, I, I expected to be the only uh, black person there. Then people are like, oh, hey, how you doing? Never seen you before. I'm like, yeah, um, from here, don't live here, but I'm in town. So I'm interested to, you know, get out here, uh, uh, meet some people, have a conversation and, and figure out what's going on in, in your brains because I know that I operate in a different space than you all. But I think it's important for us to have a conversation and get to know each other. Republican? No, 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 no. No, I'm not. I'm more so down the middle, but I lean left. And some of you might say I'm like super liberal, but I, I'm, I'm down the middle. Uh, so the interesting part about that was I was able to find common ground with these people, have conversations about serious issues, and realize that we're not as far apart as the liberal media will, will, will tell us that, <laughs> that we are, or the conservative media will tell us that we are. The, the actual people who are living life are still closely aligned in many of their views. We're just a little bit off in our execution of those views because of the people who make those decisions for us, right? The people who make the decisions for us, they're going to go here. Oh, you can't even see that shit. Or there, right, right, right. Yeah, out of, out of the frame of, of, of the camera, right? And we're somewhere, well, my head is us, right? We're in here somewhere, you know what I mean? We're either here or we're there, but like we're not here or there, right? We're not, uh, we're not as far as, as, as they wanted to make us. But that's the message that you hear. That's the message that gets to play because you know what? Consistency is boring, right? So we think. But I'd argue that people do care about consistency because you see lower viewership in baseball, lower viewership in basketball, 
And when you take away doubles and mid-range jump shots, you lose the consistency of that. You get the all-or-nothing culture of home run, walk, strikeout, or three-pointer layup, and people actually don't like that. So talking to these people, and it's like, hey, look here, I, I disagree with you on a lot of things, but guess what? We're human beings. I agree with you on some things. I think it's important for us to have conversations because a lot of people don't want to have conversations. People would live in their echo chamber. And the more and more you live in your echo chamber, the more and more you believe that your echo chamber is is actually like where you should be. And no, bro, you, you should not operate in an echo chamber. You should operate in a place that your ideas, your values, even your morals sometimes are, are getting challenged because now that gives you the opportunity to rethink your stance, rethink where you fall on these on these issues, and maybe you get closer to right because as much as we want to say that we're right all the time, we're not. As much as you want to say, well, my side gets it right, or uh, my the people I believe in, they they no no we all mess we all you know all of sin and fall short of God's glory, right? So that means that all of us are are wrong sometimes. It's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to be around people who would tell you that you're always right. And again, that's why I went to the meeting. Why? So my values, my ideas could be challenged, but also so that I could challenge the ideas, the morals, the values of the people in the meeting. But let me tell you, it was angry as hell in there. And the language that was used, for me, I found it super problematic to getting us to a place to actually work together. when. When you get so caught up on winning, especially in politics, you get so caught up on winning and and not actually getting the best result, you lose sight of what you're doing it for. You you got people who like, man, let me tell you, Stacey Abrams. You say Stacey Abrams' name in that meeting with anything positive, you might as well have just prayed to the devil. Because them folks had nothing. I mean, nothing good to say about Stacey Abrams. It's like, well, yeah, Stacey Abrams and the liberal Democrats, they did. What did they do? They mobilized, they met the people, and they enfranchised a disenfranchised group of people, and it swayed an election. That's what, that's what happened. You know, it changed what Georgia looks like nationally. But the thing about what Georgia looks like nationally versus what it looks like locally is totally different because Georgia is still red on the inside. It's just blue in Atlanta, Fulton, Cobb looks like it's going to turn blue. Gwinnett, like the Atlanta metro area is blue. But the state itself is red as the blood in my body. So woo! That's a joke. I'm not a blood. I'm, a crip. I, I'm not gang related. Uh, so. That's what I saw there. And again, the rhetoric that was being spoken on the microphone from the platform, from the leaders who were there, was totally different from the rhetoric that is spoken to the people when you have a a one-on-one conversation with them. And I look at it like the internet. The internet will tell us that we are so, so far apart. Tucker Carlson will tell us that we're so, so far apart. Chris Como will tell us we're so, so, so far apart. Whoever it is on MSNBC, I don't listen to that shit. They, they, they tell us we're so, so far apart, but we're not as far as apart as you think we are. But because we live on our computers, we live on our phones, we live on the internet, we don't live in a reality, we don't see that. And if you get out here and you start living in reality, you get out of your echo chamber because see, the, 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 the and what, what is it called? The, uh, the, 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 the algorithms. The algorithms will lead you to believe that the world looks the way that you want it to look, not the way that it actually is. You know what I mean? You're you're seeing the trees, but you're not seeing the forest when you're dealing with the algorithms. And the algorithms, as much as they're giving us what we want and what we think we need, it's actually doing damage to us because we're not getting competing points of view. And again, 
I think it's so important to have that. But let me get back to some of the, 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 the other stuff. It was a lot of anger, a lot of divisive language. Where, like, again, the middle ground existed in the real conversations, but it, it didn't exist on the post. Um, and, and what was funny, man, is that information to people who believe something don't doesn't matter, right? And I was listening to Colin Cowherd this, this week. He was talking about Tim Tebow, and he said. He learned something about Tim Tebow and Trump. Um, that the people who believe in those people don't give a damn about data. They, they only are going to feel, right? It's a, it's a feeling. And if you make somebody feel, you can throw logic data out the window. Now, don't say that. You sit there, you think about it, you go, yeah, that makes sense because you know that one person in your life who makes you feel, they make you feel good on the inside. You throw out logic and data from that person. You'll see a person's track record before you. You'll see their track record with you. But if they make you feel good, sometimes you'd be like, ah, but it's different now. No, it ain't. Not the Dirty Mac because I don't do that, but what's different? But because I make you feel good, you can look past all the, the, the information, the facts that exist there, right? And that's what I've seen that Donald Trump has done to a lot of modern-day Republicans. Boy, they, those people in that meeting were, were questioning the voting. Like, when I tell you there's probably 30 minutes spent on talking about the, the darn voting machines... And, 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 and Brad Raffensperger was able to debunk all of those myths with, with, with hard line data and then even say to the people, even if the voting machines messed it up, our guy would have still lost the election. So what are we talking about here? You know, it, it wasn't just one state. It was like... Uh, I don't feel like looking up the numbers, but it was a, a, a nice, you know, a nice little thing. Nice size lead by, by, by uh, President Joe Biden. So it just got me thinking, how, how do you relate to those people? How do you get those people to see the fault in their ways? And, and it seems like I'm beating up on the right, and I'm not beating up on the right. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm only speaking about experience I had with the right. I have not had that same type of experience with the left yet, but once I have that experience, I'll come back here and 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 let you know how I feel about that as well. And I had a moment where I felt like one of these coastal elitists because, you know, I listen to the late night talk shows and I hear how Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, who probably shouldn't have a late night show, the way they beat up on these, on, 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 the heart of America, which is the reason why Donald Trump worked because he appealed to the people he cared about, the franchise, right? Uh, these people kind of shit on the heart of America, your, your, your blue collar, middle America types, you know what I mean? Uh, with the people that I call normal America. I, and I'm sitting, I'm like, these people are highly qualified, highly capable, functional adults. hell are they thinking like how do you believe this nonsense how can you believe that all your other votes cast in an election were good except for the votes for president everything else on the ballot was was, was aj squared away you have no issues with everything else on the on the rest of the ballot you don't have an issue with one part of the ballot I don't check out, but um, Donald Trump, if you want to write a book on how to make people believe the wild shit that you say, please write that and, and, and just give it to me personally. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to give it to the mass. I just want it for myself so I can get people to believe it. Not so wild, but actual practical shit that I say. And maybe if some people believe some of the wild shit that I say, then we'll, we'll, we'll get somewhere here on Big Baby's podcast. But I've been talking about this for a minute. What? Uh, is there anything else here important I want to talk about? Please share something out on that note. 
Um, yeah, a lot of people don't believe in technology, but that's just the South because there were people talking about, oh, we should go back to paper ballots. It's like, nah, bro, um, we can't go back to paper ballots. You know what happened with the hanging chads and uh, Bush, you know, in the Bush v. Gore election, you know, we can't, we can't do that. But anyways, that's just some stuff to think about. And, and, and the biggest thing I want y'all to take away from this is, look, the Republicans are, are Trump. The Democrats on Twitter and the people are fucked. At the end of the day, we're screwed because the thing that the, the two things that are driving us is an old man with a huge ego, a website that makes insignificant people think they're significant, and we just sit here on the outside like, so 